Hey everybody, we are back with another review, and today we're going to be going over my top 10 head swaps slash customs that I've made for myself. So without further ado, let's hop right into this review, and let's check out some of these customs that I've made for myself, for my own personal collection, not for resale. <laughs> Alright, so first one straight out the gate, we probably should start off with my first one that I was inspired to do. This one was something that I really wanted to make. Um, because I know how expensive and rare that it is. Freddy Funko as Venom, Frenum. And this is basically a gold crown Freddy Funko head with the Eddie Brock 363 body. And that's what that was. It's limited to a 24 piece. Very expensive. There, I know there's a guy online who has like 18 of the 24 or something like that. Um, pretty crazy. It's been, uh, it's been something that's been a grail for most people who collect the Venom set. And I said, why? Even if I had one, I wouldn't take it out of box. So here we are. I made my own. So basically what I did was I took the, I went out looking for a gold crown Freddy Funko. And the one that I was looking for um, was, I wanted it to be under like at least a $40 range. So at the time, the one that I found was the Surfer Freddy. The Surfer Freddy. I'm going to show you here in a second what I did with the inverse of that. Surfer Freddy. So I took the head from Surfer Freddy. I had the body left over. I took the body from 363. I had that head left over. Then um, I ended up painting the hair. I didn't have to repaint the crown because it was the exact same gold that I was looking for. And here we go. Freddy Funko is Venom. So awesome pop. One of my first customs that I made for myself in the collection. And there it is. So I took the head from 363 and I took the body from Surfer Freddy and I painted the board shorts black. I painted the wave black like symbiote slime. He's just floating through the slime on the surfboard he's surfing through it's surfing eddie brock so there's the 363 head sculpt with the surfing freddy body and that's pretty cool i was going to think about doing something with the lays but then i decided nah we'll just leave them we'll also leave the little little bracelet too i mean i could have went all black with everything but you know what i mean it's kind of neat he kind of looks like a little surfer he's getting taken over by the symbiote he's riding the symbiote wave right there i thought that was pretty cool and that was one of my first like salvage pieces which actually turned out really awesome for myself um was the fact of having those leftover parts putting them together and making that awesome piece now if you know one of my favorite pops of all time this is back in the beginning when i first started doing these head swaps you know one of my favorite pops of all time if you watch my channel is venomized hulk this is probably one of the most impressive sculpts they've done um, probably to date, I think the tendrils, the way it's a separate piece, the teeth, both layers with the tongue are a three dimensional piece versus most of the other venomized ones, which is just like imprinted in the mold and sprayed on. This is really done in nice quality detail. I think uh, it's uh, probably the best mold maybe they've done yet. Maybe that Dr. Strange floating is pretty sick. Uh, it's a really nice mold from that venomized line. But if you know that, that's my favorite one. So what I ended up doing was my Eddie Brock 363 collection is rather large. So I ended up doing a repaint on the Hulk skin. So all the green I painted flesh tone. And then I put the 363 head sculpt on there. Now to me, this is this is Eddie Brock turning into Venom. He's he's more beefier. He's more comic oriented. He's Venom. You know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a Titan ready to be reckoned with and this one is an awesome transformation right here the 363 head sculpt i have multiple of these still that i have put aside for future customs this is a great inspired uh, eddie brock switching over into venom and you can see the the symbiote just kind of taking over him here with his flesh toned body as well it's awesome um and this is something that i made for myself i was like i really want a nice venom transformation funko pop and this is it sometimes you have to make them yourself for yourself you know what I'm saying like I'm not trying to sell these so Funko don't be sending me any letters or anything <laughs> these are just from my personal collection <laughs> all right so next up we got more 363 action we got another round of 363 so here is this 363 body right here for Eddie Brock and this head is from the winged venom which is awesome he has nice 3d teeth even though they are kind of molded in and the tongue is definitely a three-dimensional part and addition as well but this is a really nice head sculpt this is about as close as we're going to get to that Venom vs. Spider-Man PX Previews exclusive. Um, that's probably my favorite head sculpt for Venom, that comic Venom look. But this is comic Venom as well. The 363 body with the winged Venom head swap really makes a nice Venom pop right there. We got a nice classic comic Venom. If you can tell, ha almost half the pops today on this list are Venom. We, this is the last of them, but um, the, mo almost half of them are all Venom. So you can see how much I like the character and how much I like different variations of them. So we had some leftover parts for that. We had the winged venom body and out at the 363 head sculpt. So what did we do? We did a leaping venom. Here is Eddie Brock transforming into venom leaping. So what did I do? I removed the wings. 
we got the wings off there. You can see the wings are removed at the at the hole there. He is still attached, and from the front, he is venom leaping. I mean, come on, this is an awesome pop, and this is a great salvage pop, just like the uh, Eddie Brock surf in the symbiote wave. This is a salvage pop which came from all the pieces that were left over from me making the main head swap, the main pop I was trying to make, just like I was trying to make Eddie Brock uh, Venom or Frenum uh, over there. And I had that. This is the byproduct of this. So, And this is an awesome byproduct because we got another awesome one, which is Eddie Brock turning into Venom Leaping, which is so sick. That's a sick pop. And again, these are like customs that I made for my collection, uh, for me to have, on, you know, for my own personal collection. They're pops that I wanted to see. And sometimes, occasionally... I make some stuff and Funko ends up making it too, which is uh, you know coincidence, I'm sure, but sometimes I'm sure they get influenced because I definitely tagged them on this original post that I did, which was I made the Unmasked Mandalorian. So here we have one of the first Mandalorian molds. It is um, him with the rifle standing, and I ended up removing the head from this one, and I took the head because obviously Pedro Pascal, he's playing the Mandalorian. Din Djarin right there. And then I ended up taking, hey, what do we have that is Pedro Pascal? What head skulls we got? Oberyn Martell. And this looked, when he took his helmet off in the show and he had little Grogu there, this looks, the way his hairstyle was, is very similar to this. So when they did that, I ended up making this, and this was my little custom headpiece that I did right here. This is from Oberyn Martell and the Mandalorian. I don't know the number for this one, but it's the, one of the first molds for it. And I ended up making this, and then they just ended up releasing this which is obviously a more updated version. It's him holding the child from that scene where he's unmasked, which is a really awesome pop. If you're a Mandalorian fan, this is a great one to have in your collection. But you can see this has just more of that classic head sculpt style, and you can see the more newer stylized version here. But again, an unmasked Mandalorian, you kind of knew it was coming. And when at the time when I did make this, he was um, he was really like trying to push... He wanted a scene. I remember there was like controversy. He was trying. He was really trying to push to get a scene where he takes his helmet off because he wanted people to see who he is. The actor wanted to see wanted people to see who he who was playing the Mandalorian, uh, and that it was him. So because you know sometimes you get the stunt double and then the stunt double signing autographs and they're saying they're the Mandalorian because they played the Mandalorian but they were the stunt double. And it's all kinds of stuff going on. I guess it was like a legal suit, but they ended up working that scene in, which is this scene right here. Um, Eventually, and so again, eventually uh, Funko ended up making this unmasked Mandalorian, which is a Pedro Pascal right there that's the actor, and it looks, it's better than mine, of course, but I ended up using old original parts to try to make this, and this is about as close as I have become, I think I, I think I pretty much nailed it, he's got that messy hair look, he definitely has the mustache, this one he has a little goatee action, uh, the full line beard here from Oberyn Martell, but um, yeah, Son of Dorn awesome but yeah again it's something that i wanted i wanted an unmasked mandalorian and we got that so that's why i ended up doing that again it's something for my own personal collection so next up we got is let's do this freddy funko as boba fett this is another one i have not finished this one yet this is still on my project table but it is something that i am working on um probably one of the only work in progress is here at the moment uh, this one needs the crown to be painted red so i need to paint the crown red i'll just soak that it's a crown that's glued to the top of Freddy's head. I'll soak that, and then I'll, I'll take the head off. I'll soak that, remove the crown, paint the crown, re-glue the crown. I mean, the crown's not even fully painted. There you can see it's still white. Someone missed a spot there. But I ended up taking an OG, uh, what, number three or something, Boba Fett, and I took Freddy Funko from the Freddy Funko and HQ, Funko HQ. So, And I ended up doing a head swap, and it actually turned out pretty good. We got another salvage pop, which turned out pretty awesome. But the main, the main goal was to make this Freddy Funko as Boba Fett which we did end up doing, which is awesome. So I'm going to just, you know, paint the, uh, paint the crown red and that I'm just going to call it a day on that. I think I'm fine with that. I think that's a really cool little pop. Again, another, another high end pop, which is, um, you know, highly sought after. And even if I had one of these, a uh, Freddy Funko's Boba Fett's, I wouldn't have it out of box for like photos and stuff like that. I would probably have it in the box and be afraid to take it out. So it's nice to do customs like these as well, even for ones like Freddy Funko as Venom, because even if you had the real thing, would you really have it out, you know what I mean, for photos? It being worth that much and every little wear and tear and opening of a box, um, you know, minuses dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars off of your asking price in the end, you know what I mean? So this is the Funko HQ Freddy Funko. I ended up putting the Boba Fett helmet on it, so now he's... Freddy Funko is Boba Fett, and he's got some Funko Pops in bags for you. So I think that one's pretty cool. That's a little salvaged pop that I ended up making. Um, next up on the list, we got some Motu stuff. We got a little string of Motu stuff straight out the gate. What I ended up doing was I wanted a new mold for Prince Adam. We have the original Prince Adam from the new Retro Toys wave. 
We also have this new Revelation Adam, which kind of has a little bit more of a different look to him. So I wanted to create that one, even though he's a little bit beefy, a little bit beefier than he probably should be. But we're going to go with that because he probably should have been beefier in the show. I did a head sculpt swap. This is from the Sword in the Stone. This is Arthur pulling the sword from the stone. And check this out. Look at this. I ended up taking, this was the head sculpt on Prince Adam. I ended up swapping the heads out. Now the hands could probably get reskinned. I could probably match the flesh tone a little bit better. But, I mean, this fits freaking perfectly. And basically, it's the same story. I mean, they both they both are her heroic warriors at heart. And they end up finding a sword, which becomes the vessel for their power. And they end up being uh, being kings. So, I mean, it's basically the same story in, uh, with a broad stroke, if you would. But we have Arthur here now with the He-Man head sculpt, which is awesome. He's got that... It's got that bowl cut look. And then we also have the new updated Prince Adam look right here with the Arthur head sculpt. And I think it looks really awesome, actually. This is something, like I said, I did personally for my own collection. Um, I want a little bit of different head sculpt for Adam. And um, speaking of that, let's let's go on to our next one. Let's go on to our next one. I think you guys are going to like the next one that I did. Um, this one's really cool. This one's probably one of my favorite head swaps of all time. It's going to be, uh, what do we got? Nine, ten. So seven and eight. Seven and eight are going to be together. So let's do seven and eight. Here is Prince Adam. And here is He-Man. So these are the two original sculpts that we ended up getting. Uh, this came out for SDCC 2021. And this one came out... Um, I think in the first wave of sodas. So this is the original head sculpt we got. This is the new head sculpt we got. So I said, man, I really like this new head sculpt. This would be a great head sculpt for He-Man. So what did I do? What did I do, of course? We did a head sculpt swap. So check it out. This is the new head sculpt that I got for Prince Adam put on He-Man's body. It looks way better. Me personally, my, my personal opinion, I think he looks way better. I think it fits the character. It's a more updated look. Um, the first edition one's cool, but I think this looks way better for He-Man himself. And then also, what did I do? I have leftover parts. So what do I do? I'm a salvage customizer. I have a lot of parts, and I like to do a lot of swaps and interchangeable things. So we put at Prince Adam true to form. We put him with the He-Man head sculpt, and it looks awesome. The head sculpt fits perfectly with these shoulder pads. How it comes out like that, it meets it perfectly. He's got that snooty little attitude. Like, excuse me, princess. You know what I mean? He's got that little snooty attitude to him. So you got Prince Adam, this is the old, the new head sculpt, and this is the old head sculpt put on the new body. So that's the new head sculpt that I ended up swapping out. So these are the two new ones that I ended up doing, which I think are a little more appropriate to form. We have Prince Adam's head sculpt on He-Man, and He-Man's head sculpt on Prince Adam. And that is the two swaps that we did, and I think that's really awesome. Again, for my own personal collection, not something that I'm trying to sell here to anybody, but uh, just something that, uh, that I wanted to share with you guys, some of my head swaps that I like to keep in my collection. These are all stuff that I have, um, you know, out of box, of course, if that makes sense. So, uh, number nine, and then we got number 10 and that's it. I appreciate everybody hanging out with me tonight and checking out all of these really cool customs that I keep out of box in my collection. Um, number nine is really cool too. This is a recent one, uh, two recent pops mashed together. We have cell shaded Luke Skywalker and we have a concept series Stormtrooper. Check this out. So this is the Funko shop exclusive concept series stormtrooper now this is an awesome one because it came with this really cool shield which is stormtrooper-esque looking it has this really nice concept series lightsaber which has a nice bulbous apparatus near the hilt there which is pretty cool it's blue lightsaber so of course we're going to give this to luke and you got that nice head sculpt for luke there with the cell shaded look and it looks like it's perfect for a nice bright time there because the gloss on this stormtrooper is high and also you have this cell shaded look where you can definitely see like the the light shining off of Luke's face. Here's some more of that what I'm talking about. And, and the hair as well has it, has the light parts in it and the dark parts. And this is just a really cool mashup for me. I like Luke Skywalker as a stormtrooper, and I think this is a great mold for that because it has that beautiful shield with that nice new concept series lightsaber. So I don't know. This is a uh, like I said, it's a new, two newer pops mashed up together, and I ended up putting it set. He's sitting at an offset with the shield, which looks really cool, too, because I ended up setting it where the center of Luke's face is through the center of the Star Wars placard there. So it gives him that nice Z offset, which is really cool. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. New concept series, Luke Skywalker as a Stormtrooper. I mean, can you beat that? Seriously. All right, number 10 on the list. We got here's the main one and i'll show you the salvaged one for this one the salvaged one for this one wasn't that great luke skywalker with a stormtrooper helmet on isn't really that great not something you want to mash together but this one did come out with something cool so i really wanted 
uh, a new Scrooge McDuck pop for myself. I said, if Scrooge had a bunch of money put together and he was doing security, I'm sure he'd probably build himself a nice mech. So we got Scrooge McDuck in the mech. How sick is that? Look at that. He's got his blazer off. He's casual Scrooge trying out his new mech for his security detail at the money bin. Pretty sick, right? Probably one of my favorite customs that I've made so far is this one. It just perhaps happened to come together perfectly. <laughs> Look at that. It's a big mallard bill. Uh, it's perfect. This is perfect for Scrooge. So this was something that came came to me perchance because I happened to collect a lot of duck pops. Um, I don't know. I, I really liked DuckTales when I was a kid. I used to love watching Scrooge McDuck and the adventures he'd get involved with. Um, I'd say probably DuckTales on the NES was one of the first games that I like truly mastered on the NES and was able to beat backwards and forwards every single time I sat down. Um, so it, you know, it's, it hits home with me. So, you know, me having a lot of these duck pops allow me to see the interchangeable ways that they can work together. So here is Scrooge McDuck with the mech and the mech was originally a Howard, the duck, a Howard, the duck gamer verse pop. <laughs> I just did a head swap here and it worked out perfectly because right here we got is a young Scrooge McDuck here before he got his little frills on the side. So we have a young Scrooge McDuck. Probably if I can make another one, I'd do young Scrooge McDuck with a young Goldie because Goldie was his his girl that he was sweet on back in the day. So a young Scrooge McDuck with his number one dime. Probably can get rid of the cane. I can get rid of the cane and put something else in his hand and I'd have a young Scrooge McDuck. But this is a good salvage one for me because I can make another concept series Scrooge McDuck with this, which is pretty awesome. I can take the cane out of there and put something else in his hand. Um, maybe a bag of money or something. I don't know. I could do something pretty cool, I'm sure. But a young Scrooge McDuck, and then I'm going to do a young Goldie. So that is a pop in the works, in the making still. Just kind of like how I didn't finish the Boba Fett. But the main one is done, which is this Scrooge McDuck with the mech. So pretty awesome. Glad I was able to share some of my out-of-box um, head swapped or custom pops with you, whether they're repaints. Um, these are all done with um, brush by brush. I did just purchase a airbrush machine, so I will be doing a little bit more detail work with customs. But for now, this is just kind of what I started with and kind of how my customs for Funko Pops kind of started for myself was doing head swaps and kind of equipment swaps, you know, something like this where you're making like a pop that doesn't exist but it's awesome and you want it in your collection type of thing, like the Scrooge McDuck in the mech. So, or a more appropriate head sculpt that you think for a pop versus the one that they've already provided. Anyway, let me know down in the comments below, which one was your favorite out of my selection here? And do you have any head swaps that you have done personally that you like? Let me know down in the comments below, which two pops did you mash up together and what was the main one you were going for? So let me know that down in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Want more content like this, subscribe for more because I do reviews every single day. So look out for that and have a great rest of your day.